micro We jam to abandoned buildings Seize an empty cup we fill on I keep my circle tight Vibe just right with my six strings Singing all night Gender, faith, color, or lover Welcome everyone to the Eve Growing Concept. Today's video is going to be an Eve Growing Revealing video. I'm going to show the inner makeup of my Eve containers and towers. It's quite simple, basically, what's going on in here. There's other people doing similar work. I don't necessarily know if they're doing it to the same degree I am. My gardens in the future, I predict we're going to be having mobile gardens where each tower or grow unit is like some intelligent farm animal that comes out from the field to the grower who is waiting in a nice cool comfortable place where all the growing needs are met for the plant so there's no longer the farmer doesn't have to go out to the fields to do that hot labor and run all that irrigation everything is done within these maybe possibly an abandoned building you know we've done videos on um, Amazon and how amazing they are and all these other store buildings that are being abandoned because of Amazon. Well, with the Eve Growing System, these buildings that are situated mostly in urban settings are perfect for urban farming. So if there's anybody out there who's looking, who has an abandoned building and they're tired of looking at it, get contact me and we can turn, you could be the first Eve Growing location where we showcase the Eve Growing concept. So today, again, we're going to be taking apart these, these, this bin here, not the, not the tomatoes, we're going to be taking apart this string bean case and I don't know, this tower is still going strong. Today is October 7th. I was able to move these plants into, when it was cold at night, when I knew there was going to be frost in the morning, I was able to move these plants into a safe place where they wouldn't get that frost so I'm able to go longer growing cycles. That's one of the beauties of a mobile garden, that's the beauty of Eve growing. Eve is designed specifically for urban living where we can start turning vacant lots, rooftops into awesome organic farms. Within each container is a living underground world where we try to mimic Mother Earth's best growing condition. When I pack a bin I put about five red wigglers in there each time because Eve containers are perfect conditions for red wigglers and these guys of course help with the aeration and the drainage these as they tunnel in and start feeding on the food um, they uh, do their they do their magic and of course those five wet red wigglers at the end of the season and I'll show you when I take these apart they multiply and you know some of them like this this 55 gallon drum I forget how many I might have put 20 in it in that half 55 gallon drum but mostly I try to put about five of them because I don't want the worms to get too big where I have to, because it's not only about watering your plants, you gotta make sure your red wigglers have enough food to eat besides the compost you add into the container. So, and I wanna dedicate this video to all the people who have been waiting patiently for me to show this, this inner makeup of my containers here. Um, I, I appreciate it. Know that um, at the very least, I've changed it somewhat since I would have showed you two, three years ago. It's changed immensely. So saving you guys the time. I spent the time doing it and I'm going to share it with you so you can get up to snuff with me. It's about using the stuff that everybody is throwing away. Stuff that's readily available in urban settings if you know what to look for and where to find free supplies. Now Eve Growing is trying, is competing, I feel, I've personally proven to myself that Eve Growing is far superior than the soilless growing, the aquaponics, aeroponics, and hydroponics. These non-traditional growing methods, Eve easily competes and surpasses with them. My ultimate goal is to mirror my family. I have a father who is an awesome, who is an awesome gardener in his own right, and he grows traditionally. And my, I have a sister as well that's a gardener who has a beautiful garden. They grow in uh, soil here in New England and their stuff for the most part is looks better than mine. Okay. They don't contain it, they have the freedom of the earth and um, my system is more for California. It's more for these places that lack water, right? And I, with my system you can take full control of your soil, you can take full control of your plants and there's so many things you can do, whether it's a Dutch bucket system, whether it's a tower like this, or a, or a half 55 gallon drum, there's many ways to arrange a container. We are limited only by our imagination. What you're going to see today is the inner makeup, and I'll let you guys judge if it was 
that it wasn't even worth waiting the three years or so when I first started opening my Facebook link. Know that I have some links below. I have a fermenting Facebook link for those of you who don't know what it is. Verminting is a new vermiculture technique, again, designed specifically for urban living, uh, where you can do vermiculture in your apartments, in condos, anywhere, because there is no smell, nothing gets in, nothing gets out. My verminting bins are very similar to these towers in, in many ways. It's about internal aeration, fast direct irrigation. We must always keep that in mind. All the soil in here, and we'll talk more about this, comes from my carbon-based composting bin which is a carbon compost, which I use strictly carbon, put slurry on there, which regulates the temperature, 160 degrees. And the soil is mixed with my worm castings. I might add a little lime or some grit for these worms that are doing all the magic. When I talk about a worm farm, I'm talking about worms farming. They're doing the work. And they you know, in a world where technological unemployment is a fact, it's a reality, it's coming to us soon. Truck drivers, um, computer people, all kinds of different jobs are being replaced by the, the um, machine, which is a good thing for the most part because they're doing the manual labors that we don't have to waste our time. In the future, urban farming jobs are going to be the jobs of the future where we all start growing each, uh, where we all start growing food for one another as we treat ourselves like one big global family. I want to say one other thing. I want to dedicate this video to, to this passion that I have um, with Jacques Fresco, Roxanne Meadows with the Venus Project, and Peter Joseph with the Zeitgeist Movement, uh, Colin, I forget his name, with the Free World Charter, and the many other people who understand what we must do as a people to help uh, support and maintain this awesome ship called planet earth for the long haul for we're all a part of the problem and we're all a part of the solution and um, I hope this video inspires you to become an urban farmer inspires you to see that there is hope there is hope for this planet and us urban farmers we hold the key to it urban farmers when I ever hear somebody talk about a farmer or urban farmer I get excited these people are a part of my religion whether they know it or not they, they have the secret they have a secret to the sacred and they have a secret to the world's problems There's many people doing similar stuff by the way and uh, one person that comes to mind is Larry Hall God bless his soul I've been following um, Larry Hall for a long time he has the um, gutter growth system I'll put a link below for him but he's moved on I'm gonna miss his voice and listening to him. His passion for organic growing. This system is very similar um, in many ways. And it's also, of course, you look at this and you think of the Tower Garden by Tim Blanks, who um, inspires me very much. I wanna give a, um, a, a shout out to Britta, who the window farm, way back when, when I started studying um, soilless growing and started creating my own systems, um, Britta, I forget her last name, but it, it's the window farm. I'll put a link below there. She's no longer doing that. I don't know where she is, but I want to give a shout out to that girl. I want to give a shout out to Ron Finley, the, the gangster gardener who I just visited um, early in September. And we had a great talk and uh, I would love to bring Eve there first and foremost. We talked basically about it, but we didn't talk about how, to, how I can help support, support my family in this nasty economical system that we're all a part of and again is destined to destroy us all if we don't wake up to the problems that we're years late in doing. So without further ado, I'm gonna start with this bean, this right bean here. tower. This is just a half a 55 gallon drum, about a little more than 25 gallons. And um, again, I went away for two weeks without watering this system and it did need water but you know, the beans did do good, they got big. So what I'm, what I'm good with this is I'm gonna show you the internal makeup of this design here. If you can find 55 gallon drums or similar, pick them up and hopefully you can get them for free like I did. I had two, I had a guy on Craigslist with a bunch of 55 gallon drums and he was giving them away. And I only have an electric car, so I had no way of picking them up. So what I did is I went, I rented a U-Haul. I went and picked up about 26 55-gallon drums. There were more that had killed me not to pick up. So it cost me under $70 to rent the U-Haul, but I sold four of them off at $25 a piece. I made $100, so I kind of made money 
to go pick these 55 gallon drums and if you're watching any of my facebook links or my verminting facebook links um, which those links will be below you'll see that there's many uses for 55 gallon drums as grow towers or and as vermiculture farms worm farms so what else do I want to say about that? Okay, and as far as aquaponics, we're going to be doing all kinds of videos on aquaponics. I love aquaponics, but um, I, and I've built several systems, aquaponic systems, but I, Eve is better than aquaponics on many levels. First of all, it's better because, you, you know, one system isn't dependent on the other. The fish aren't dependent on the plants, and the plants aren't dependent on the fish. Um, you, you have, but you can still use the fish water to, as an added nutrient when you're cleaning your fish tanks. So it's more about an aquarium. And of course, most aquaponic systems, they use fish that can take distressed water or dirty water, the tilapia, the catfish, and similar. It's very rare that a person uses a trout for an aquaponic system or a bass uh, fish that really need nice, clear water. And there's a reason why they do that. I'm not saying the, the, the trained professional doesn't use these type of fish with great results. I'm just saying that the, the novice, it's very difficult to, um, to do it. Here, and what I'm gonna do with the beans is I'm gonna save the bean seeds and I'm gonna use them for next year. And Hopefully. let's take this thing apart. You ready? <laughs> and of course, all this stuff here is going to be minced up and we're gonna turn, put that into our carbon-based composting pile. Of course, it's all green right now, so it's not gonna be carbon. Um, but, you know, it's gonna be minced up. You wanna break things down to the smallest possible pieces because again, the more surface area exposed on our organic matter, the faster it all breaks down. So by the, by the time I get to mincing it, it'll be a carbon, but sometimes I do add a little green. There is a little nitrogen that goes with it, but all this stuff, will I'll mince it up small so it breaks down a heck of a lot faster. <laughs> Let's see what's going on inside here. All this stuff will be. Everything here is going to go back and turned into soil, of course. I got a kale here. But I think I'm going to add to my inside garden. I don't know how he got in here, but I must have planted him too. This guy we're going to plant um, into my indoors. I've started growing indoors, so let's see what we got here. Mostly red wigglers in here, but there might be some Alabama jumpers too. I've been finding a lot of them these days more and more. We'll talk about Alabama jumpers later on in life. See, tomatoes I throw I throw all my stuff in here just like a regular garden all right so far I don't see oh there's a red you can't probably see them there and I don't want to go through the time to show you each one but as I see them I'll tell you here's what here's a red I see some eggs in here too and the way this bin is designed they like to go deeper because there's air at the bottom of here and a lot of um, uh, moisture. So they kind of like it at the bottom. And again, this is just minced leaves made from my carbon-based composting bin and worm castings with some lime or um, fine sand that I add for grit for these red wigglers. I start seeing a lot, a lot. Here's an Alabama jump. Here's an Alabama jumper right there. A little smaller one. Here's one right here. They're like snakes. Almost looks like a um, African nightcrawler, right? Looks like a nightcrawler, but they move like snakes, and they seem to have a certain intelligence there. So we'll put him there. Here's another one. I guess we got a lot of those guys in there. When I see him, I throw him in there. I can't remember the last time I did, but they do well as well in there so you can see that there's tons 
and tons of worms in here for sure. All right, I gotta go get a spade or a fork of some kind. And loosen it up so I don't squish the worms when I dig it up. Now, another thing with these planters is at the bottom, you'll, you'll notice, I don't know how many worms I threw in here, but let me see if I can see any eggs too, because that's a sign of a good worm bin when you can see eggs. I'm using just my iPhone as a camera, so it's pretty much up to date, but for the most part, I could see the worms, but I don't know if you guys will be able to. It doesn't, doesn't take too many, so it moves the soil around. I haven't watered this for a long time. Right when I got back from vacation, I watered it to see if my beans had come back to life, but they all got big, too big anyway. I left for vacation when um, the beans were in full. All right, now, you notice this? See, that much water remains at the bottom. And if you could look, there's all kinds of worms inside here. The roots went through this screening. And the screening here was simply from a trampoline protection cage that I picked up. All the parts, again, can easily be found in urban settings. And here I have a bicycle tire from an old bike that I put in here to separate the, the, the medium, the grow medium from the liquid. So in the wicking part, I used all old cotton, 100% cotton t-shirts to wick up. I had a cardboard going around here and the worms just ate all that stuff. So I gave, uh, pretty much when I packed this bin full, with the stuff I gave enough stuff for the worms to eat and here's the roots from it all kinds of red wigglers in here so we'll take this whole thing and basically you know I probably could have left this like this and um, see here's an egg worm egg cocoon there's one I don't see as many as I'd like but there's there's a lot of worms in here so, and the reason why um, I'm taking it apart too is to get these worms. I want to put them to work in my basement and start breaking down some organic matter down there. But I think for the most part, here is a, this was a nylon sock. Worms don't eat nylon. So that's a great wicking material for, for the worms that they don't eat that part. But I put a lot of cotton. You could throw all kinds of stuff in here. You can cut and we'll talk about that as this goes on. But basically this is it. This is a bike tire, right here. Another one, all these socks, I will reuse those again. They're nylon, so the worms don't eat it. So they make great wicking, wicking uh, tools. I got some more plants that I'll be using this water to feed them because that's our nutrients, right? So let me go get a bucket here. all good stuff right there. Let me take this out of here. So basically, that's what it is. You got a total of one, two, the conduit, three, the grommet, a bike tire with all the socks, not too many items, and this tire that went with the tire just to, for a little decorative. You got your nylon screen which I'll be using this again next year with all kinds of red wigglers entangled within. And these socks, I wouldn't be surprised if there's all kinds of reds in here as well. As they look, you know, when you, when you go long periods of time not um, watering, they find these little places to get some uh, moisture until the next watering. But let's, let's kind of take this apart real quick. Okay. See if I can find 
See, there's one. Whole bunch right in here. All babies. So I, I you know, when I packed this one, I know I used, I, I know I did bigger worms. So I know they've been breeding. So it's about, again, trying to mimic Mother Earth's best growing conditions. Does it compete with the non-traditional growing methods? Yes, all day long. And it doesn't use any fertilizer at all. It's all the worm castings and my compost. So that's basically half gallon, 55 gallon drum. All right, so we're gonna show you the inner makeup of a simple Eve bucket. How you turn just a regular bucket with one plant in it. And this, I hopefully will give you an idea for you uh, engineering types who, could, who just needed a picture or pictorial. I hope this at least gives you an idea of how to do it. It's just a uh, one inch hole drilled into a bucket for the most part for this particular container and um, it's basically a sunflower. This sunflower did all right. Um, I only used a three gallon bucket for it so I should have probably used a six gallon bucket. Planted it in my my organic filter. My pool I'm working with an organic filter. I think this is going to be another reason why I should all stay tuned because I've been working with organic filters where I can use less chlorine. I'm trying to mirror what they're doing in Europe with their um, natural swimming pools. I think we can do we can treat our swimming pools like some kind of huge aquarium and uh, we'll be doing shooting videos on I that. experimented it with this year with some with promising results. So I haven't necessarily filtered the whole, I did use chlorine, very little chlorine this year, but um, next year I hope to have a better system in place where I can start showcasing the, this organic filter, which I feel would at least compete with um, natural swimming pools that they have without having to go through all the motions. Pools that already exist, especially pools like mine, this 40 by 20 concrete 60 year old pool is, um, is a classic, is something that I think we can turn it into a natural swimming pool like they do in Europe with their pools that they put the liners and they do all that work. Been doing a lot of research on that. Got a truck going by here. My dog, of course, got to bark. Got to get excited about it. Let's look at this very simple three gallon bucket that you can put a tomato in. One tomato or you can put one plant in. It's basically three gallons. I don't know, each plant is different and requiring more. As many of us know, these sunflowers require a lot, but I, a lot of space for their roots to grow. But I was thinking and hoping that with this internal aeration at the bottom and fast irrigation that the plant would think it has more room than it actually has. Let's take a look at it. Now this is just one way to do it. So you see all those reds down there, right? I basically have one can. This helped keep, what I did is I put a bunch of cans at the bottom and I put a screen on top of that. Let me take a look at that. Now the screen can be anything. All materials that are easily found in urban settings. You see these red wigglers running from the light. All right, let's take it apart a little bit. <clears throat> These socks all wicked up. So you see all the roots that went around. I'm not necessarily sure this is the best way to do it. You can see all the red wigglers there. And they're all hiding in between here. And again, these are not cotton, these are acrylic socks so the worms don't eat it they eat whatever little organic material is there but so this again I use that as my screen to keep the the medium away from the water all kinds of reds on there and this can be used again I see some eggs here all kinds of eggs this one did really good as far as um, worms go I think because I again with the with the three gallons with these I don't try to put too many because they can if you put too many they can go through your their food very quickly so if you add just enough then they'll breed all kinds of little babies in here I don't know if you could see that but that was this sunflower seed bucket so basically we had 
if you can figure it, we had this half inch hole with the grommet and the half inch PVC put through. I had an elbow. This can be tied into a Dutch bucket grow system. This I had to protect the the, the conduit from clogging never does it clog guys that's the beauty about this system too so you can throw almost anything in it and when you're watering you can throw all kinds of this organic water that you saw out of that uh, half gallon or that half 55 gallon all that water I'll just pour right onto another plant so that was basically it this can be used again this can has literally since it's aluminum has no um, no sign of rust or wear of course because it's aluminum so that's basically it this soil here i'm going to add this liquid i'm going to add to my water here and then i'm going to water it with my plants then i'm going to water it so that's basically this one here the seeds here this guy didn't do that great but i got some seeds there i'll break that off and i'll have some sunflower seeds all right, so it's you, basically, it's just a few simple principles and you, you do use what you have. Use what's readily available in your urban setting. To where they, and the reason why I have to break them down is because I live in New England and I don't want these reds to freeze. But if you live in the warmer climates where there is no free, uh, freezing, your, your bins could probably go forever. Again, Eve is pretty much designed for you people who live in hot climates. Here in New England, I don't have to save my water. We have tons of water. I do because it's important we all do anyway. Just because we have an abundance doesn't mean we have to waste it. So I do save my water only because it's a, it's a great nutrient for my plants. You people who do aquaponics, I hope you're paying attention. You don't need, you don't need to have your plants and your fish dependent on one another. You can keep them separate and do the same exact thing. In fact, you get more nutrients when you add the red wiggler factor in there, the compost factor in there, rather than just using fish water. We know that aquaponics works. People have done it. Is it better than growing with soil? Uh, I don't think so, because for one thing, the aquaponics, you lose the art of composting and vermiculture, things that can break down our organics. So, um, save the aquaponics, the hydroponics, and aeroponics for these commercial growers. You know, as the world populates, we need, they're very important growing systems, don't get me wrong. But as far as the residential grower who hopes to have a garden, Eve is so much easier. Trust me on that one. You know, I know these schools and municipals, they're getting these grants and they're putting this money towards soilless growing. The, um, the guy from the Bronx, uh, what the heck's his name, Steve, I think, something like that, who is working with the Tower Garden. And he's got a ton of them. He's got the money to use them. And he does a great job with them, don't get me wrong. But my system over here does the same thing. I don't have to have a pump watering it all the time. I can water it once, twice, a, once, possibly twice every two weeks, depending on the plant's growth and what you're, what you're growing. And how you set your bin up, remember. This is just how I do it. You people who are getting enthusiastic about the Eve growing system, you're going to have your own ideas that are going to pop into your head. and You're going to do your own experimenting. I've done a lot of it. I hope I can bring you at least up the stuff to where I am, and then we'll go from there. Okay, let's open one more real quick. I'm going to open um, this top one that has a couple green peppers in there. They're done. It's not going to grow anymore here in New England as the frost is ready to approach us. Let's take this one out and showcase this. Again, mobile gardens. Guys, you heard it here first. Look at, this. Look at how green this is here. This is at the next bucket. Let's do the pepper bucket here. And again, very easy to water. I have this jug that I throw on top of here and through the magic of siphoning, I just put it right in here. This is two gallons. It might take two of these with these three here. But of water from the top in this little spot here goes all the way down out to the bottom very easy to do very easy to mechanize in the future i don't feel i need to do that just yet because i don't have the big huge commercial farm i aspire to get one day or not get work with work with passionate people like myself yeah if you're looking to have an inner city farm um, contact me by email or contact me by my facebook pages and we can talk about how you can hire me to come set up a farm using it isn't about the materials used that's the beauty about hiring somebody like me I will help you find materials in your location 
Well, you hire a guy like me to come in, maybe you hire me for a month to set up your garden. Well, we'll set up a, a little Garden of Eden, a modern day Garden of Eden, where everything is moving and living and creating, and we're breaking down our organics, we're growing organic food, we're getting rid of these food deserts for good, and we're doing it ourselves. We as a people, urban farming is exciting work. You know, way back when, when I was in high school, I used to see these kids doing agriculture, BOAG, right? And I used to think to myself, they're all farmers, they're all kind of grubby, and my immature, naive, egotistic self would think to that, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to be some kind of an actor. I want to be some kind of a uh, millionaire type person. I don't want to do that. Well, the truth of it is, farming, I find out now, <laughs> 40 years later, that, um, Farming is the way to go. It's spiritual. It's um, it's uplifting. You get to you feel good about taking care of nature. You get to understand nature, especially on the micro scale when you start dealing with soils and worms. So much to be said. Let's get back to taking this pepper plant down. Now these peppers could have done better, I think. For some reason, they didn't do quite good. They're still flowering at times, so. You know, one thing about, I want to say about Eve growing compared to the hydroponics and aeroponics is it doesn't grow as fast. When you grow organically, it doesn't grow as fast. So take that with it and you guys, but you know what? We're growing organically. We're not using synthetic fertilizers, which I have nothing against synthetic fertilizer. If we're growing food for people, uh, hopefully healthy food, I'm all for it. So I'm not against the hydroponics, aquaponics, aeroponics. I am telling you that there's an easier way, a way that's better for the planet because we're composting and recycling. We're turning all our outputs into or, or awesome soil amendments. Very important. It's a very feel-good feeling doing so. It's time-consuming, but in the new world, when Andrew Yang gives us all $1,000, don't tell us that you're giving it to us. You're paying us to break down our outputs so we have less um, impact on the environment as a whole with all these trucks that come and pick up our, our trash and stuff like that. We're taking care of it ourselves. Put pressure on these corporate entities to start using compostable packing material. Uh, these restaurants, these huge chains and cafeterias don't use plastics just because um, uh, compostable spoons and plates are a little bit more expensive put the pressure on them to use them get rid of the plastic altogether we all know they pollute our planet and our our wildlife is dying because of it it's gonna last a lot longer than us put policies in place where these corporate entities have to use compostable materials when packing or uh, restaurants when using um, a takeout they use it's all out there there's all kinds of um, alternatives to the, the plastic so Andrew Yang don't call it a, a free giveaway call it a, a paying us for doing this kind of work and you know once we're all organic farmers and having the machines do all the stupid labor I can get my own coffee really if you I'll bring my cup I'll use it there I'll bring my own cup or a cup I don't mind if I'm gonna sit there let me use your cup and you rinse it out for me and use it again that's all. There's many ways we can do that. We did it way back in the, the, the 50s and 60s with the milkman when they came and delivered your milk and dropped it off. We can do it again, especially with today's technology. So let's take this pepper plant out of here. So basically, you see, I only have a couple straps or one strap right here that holds all three of these in place as you're moving. And of course, all this stuff is stuff I find. I know what to look for. Screening. Good, good rope to tie your plants up. Buckets are being thrown away all day long, folks. Don't go buy buckets. Again, they're all over the place. This is a a cat litter for cat litter that I pick up at uh, a place. A six gallon, I've turned it into a watering system. I don't even use that kind of cat litter, of course. I will do talk more about cat litter and what I do with, with cat litter. We compost everything here, folks. So let's take this guy apart. I have been eating some of the peppers on here. That's a green pepper, kind of small. I had bigger ones. That one doesn't look that good. Mm. Tastes good. I know it's organic because I grew it. And I'm only eating like this because if you're anything, anybody, anything like me, 
people love when you mukbang or when people eat while they're talking. For some reason, it's so irritating, you can't stop watching it, right? This definitely needs to be watered. You can tell because it's light. After watering, these become heavy. And again, about this. Oh, this one is a different setup. Because the hole is at the bottom. And we'll show you how that looks and why the hole on the bottom goes right down. And I, I could see some reds here already that are coming out of there. And the reason why they are is because, you know, when the moisture is totally gone, they go, that's when they come out. If their living conditions are perfect, they will be happy. So let's take this plant apart. And this guy's still got a flower that if I brought it inside, I could probably... This one has a, like the vermenting bin, it has a uh, internal tube, mesh tube to um, help with aeration throughout. And you can see all the roots are just up here as well. I'm going to try to pull, let me see if I can't try to... S this guy here, have a... Peppers, I find you can do a lot in them, in a small space. Notice this is my last year's design here, where I slit, I drilled two holes here, made a slit, used a heated this part up here put a board in here to make a hole kind of like um the garden tower i think i got that idea the original when i tried to make, make my, my own. own colin kind of gave me that idea there and then we have this empty it out Tons of roots. There's one red, not as many reds as I'd like. But this was a design that I did. You can, this required two buckets. This is from a bucket from another bucket. I put a lot of holes in it. And I use this. And see how that, this conduit here, See how that conduit here comes up? So at the top of that, that's about how much water, when you after watering, it remains in the bucket. And then I had this like this to hold the subfloor like this. Then I put all kinds of, you could put all kinds of cotton down here, a cotton t-shirt from like an event you went to and nobody's ever gonna buy it again. You don't know what to do with it. Don't throw it away, especially if it's 100% cotton. You throw it at the bottom here, the worms will turn that into castings as well and it'll give it a, they'll give them a place to hide if you get, forget to your water your plants for a month or something like that. Then I put just regular screening on top of this and I don't know if this is necessarily necessary, but I had this vermenting type screen in here as well. And all this stuff I find. I see some worms. They like to go in here. Now this was empty when I first started it. So these worms, and I had a nylon sock. See, there's tons of worms in here right now. You can see them all. That's where they all went to get, get moisture because I hadn't watered this in a while. So that's where they all went. Notice all the roots went to that aeration tube. Because again, it's about internal aeration, fast direct irrigation. This is the inside of the sock where the roots are inside there, getting that air, self pruning, right? Up oh, there goes a red. Not many worms in there, but enough to make for good aeration and drainage as they work their magic, making little paths that they keep going back and forth on. So that's just a galvanized mashup. Put that over there. This one, 
is an older model, which I do like, and I will use this again. I think this is like probably two or three seasons now this container is. Again, this bucket here is a 90 millimeter thick, working very well. So that's that one. And all these roots, this big root ball, we'll go back into, what is that, Jenny? Oh, 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 oh kitty, Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. God, cat, she almost got a cat. All right, so exciting around here. So this is all stuff that'll go right in, even this stuff. These roots, old roots, all get used again. And all this soil will be added to next year's soil as I build upon it and make it better and better. Next year, with all those worms in it, I probably don't have to do anything to it. There, and all these parts. And I tell you, it does become a lot of parts. It looks a little... All could be used again. All right, so that was an older model, right? I'm looking, here's a newer model here. Look at the hole opening that I emptied the other day. This is similar to the air holes. This is similar to the air holes I use for my verminting bins with a screen on it. Great, it keeps the uh, it keeps the um, structure of the bucket sound as you as your towers get higher. I mean, sky's the limit. Vertical growing is the limit here. So that's basically it. I think it helps. I think it gives those who have been waiting. I think it gives you a good idea. I think I did show, basically, I think it's like Larry Halls and um, I forget the other guy who I just found like a month ago. I'm doing similar stuff. I'll put the link below. I forget his name. I'll put it below here. But he's doing similar to this stuff that I've been doing. I don't think he got to the mobile gardening yet, the mobile aspect of it, but he will. And what else can we open up? This guy here, this tomato guy here, um, let's just look. See all the see all the garbage I put here. Let me show you here. Let's take a quick look at in these tomatoes. Be, these tomatoes, by the way, I've been picking on them for a long time, and they've been doing good for October. Again, I was able to bring them into a safe place, so the frost or the cold mornings wouldn't get at them here in New England. Let's take a look. And of course, as the season went out, I started just throwing all this stuff, extra stuff that I should have composted. All this stuff I usually mince up and feed to my worms, but I just throw it on here for now. Let's just see if we can find what's going on here. Each one is a worm farm. This one's got a ton of worms. So before it gets cold, I want to go rescue these guys. I don't want them freezing. And I could just dump the soil right by the compost pile and they'll find a warm spot. See them all over there? I don't know if you can see them. They're all running. That's why these plants do so good because of the planters that are just teeming with red wigglers. All right, guys, that's it for this um, episode. I know it's a little long. I hope it answers a lot of questions for my Eve Facebook group, people who have been waiting for the internal makeup. I hope it lived up to expectations. I'll be showing how to do a tower as well. We'll go to the next step and I'll show you how you can turn any food grade container into an awesome growing tool for inner city growing. You know, what do I got here? Oh, God. Oh, bother. Okay, if you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel, come to our uh, Facebook groups, and come to our Eve Growing Facebook group and our Verminting group, and we'll literally grow up together. That's all I have to say for now. God bless. Over now. Work hard to play harder. Raise up your glass, be whiskey or water. Here's to us in our freaking weekend. So, yeah, let that party begin. I said, yeah, let that party begin. I said, yeah. Let that party begin